morning everyone today morning. we are in the house of the the last president and then the first presiding bishop of Methodist Church Ghana he is the person of most reverend Dr. Samuel Asante Entry. Daddy, good morning. good morning. We are grateful for granting us this interview this morning. This year marks 20 years yeah. uh, since we went Episcopal. A lot has gone on. We have gained a lot of membership. Those from 20 years below don't know anything about Episcopacy. Yeah. So today, we are from Northern Accra Diocese. Yeah. Greetings from the Bishop. Thank, Thank you so much. much. We are here for you to tell us a little story about Episcopacy. To start my question, Papa, I want to know what is Episcopacy? Well, it's simply leadership in the church based on biblical theology and then the traditions of the church based on the experience of the church and it's also based on the tradition of the church. When I say the church, it's not only the Methodist church, but the whole worldwide church. You know, in the church, we had various traditions. Some people are Presbyterians, others are Anglicans, then you have the Catholics. These days, you have the uh, Pentecostals and Charismatics and the rest. So, Episcopacy is a leadership style in the church. And that's what uh, the Methodist Church Ghana is following now. All right, thank you, Papa. And so, why did Methodist Church Ghana decide to go Episcopacy? That's a very, very important question. We decided to go Episcopacy because we felt that we belong to the whole world, world church. When you travel outside Ghana, uh, let me limit myself to Africa. There are a lot of churches which are Methodists and they have gone Episcopal so that we can, the church can become one, which was the prayer of our Lord Jesus Christ. Right. So, Papa, does that mean that the old system that we were using uh, wasn't the right thing? It was the right thing. But, you know, the world is changing. And it's something all of us should know. Uh, in the past, you have small, small churches. For example, in the Methodist Church, Ghana, it came into this country so many years ago. The question is, how many were the members? Very few members. But as the world is spreading with changes, and as I've said, with different style of church leadership, if we don't try to follow or if you don't want to change, you see that we have been left behind. For example, the church, when I say the church now, I'm referring to the Methodist Church Ghana. We were just about five dioceses. But now, we are 20. The question is, are we saying that in the past it wasn't a church? It was, but it was not meeting the needs of people now. So we have to change so that, if you like, the chair can become attractive and it could also become ecumenical. 
when I say the word ecumenical, I'm talking about the whole world wide church. Very, very important. And that's why the Methodist Church was not left behind. In the past, we used to be with the Christian Council. Still, we are with the Christian Council. But other ecumenical bodies have come up. So we also must come up as a group within one doctrine, one teaching, that is the Trinitarian doctrine, so that we can also propagate a lot of message to the whole world wide. It is an interesting story which I wish the present day bishops, <laughs> the present day uh, superintendent, superintendent ministers, yes. the present day circuit ministers and the rest will be able to teach. When you're able to teach that, then people will know that uh, we have a very sound doctrine. Right, Papa, thank you. But uh, another question. Yep. That is the, the doctrine. You've spoken about the doctrine while we went Episcopal. But couldn't we have gone with our uniform, the, the clergy, the uniform that you were using? Yep. Couldn't we, couldn't you people have gone on using that, a suit? That is also a very, very interesting question. Uh, you know, vestments are very important in any organization. Of course, I know as a Methodist, maybe you belong to one of the uh, groups or organizations. Women fellowship. Women fellowship, of course. If you don't wear your dress, you cannot identify yourself as very, very important. Now, a priesthood has its own dress. And it goes back to God himself. We didn't see him, but we saw him as somebody in a mighty, you know, apparel. Moses also had a dress. All the prophets, they had to wear a, dress, a particular dress to identify them. And of course, as Africans, we like colors. So they are colorful. And this should portray in our religious, uh, you know, attire, in our religious appearance. You are talking about uh, men fellowship. Look at the Christ the Tell Band. Susanna Wesley, the choir. Singing band, precisely. So that is it. Very colorful. And of course, when you come to the various uh, societies or circuits or the diocese, you have a particular dress for special occasion to identify you that, yes, I belong to this group. So that's why you have the priesthood of all believers. But as a clergy, you must identify yourself. That is very, very important. Right. So that is my simple uh, answer to your 100 million questions. <laughs> I'm grateful. It's a pleasure. Yeah. And the uh, fourth question. Yep. What are the sub, uh, what are some of the benefits that we can say that we've got it since we went to this program? Yep. Many of them. Many. Again, as I said, the church is a worldwide organization. Since we went in, when the Catholics, who are also Episcopal, the Anglicans, other Episcopal churches. When we meet, we speak certain language. Okay. And the language is important. It helps you as one who belongs to the Episcopal system to do certain things. And not, if you like, not to do certain things. So that is the benefit, of the first one I would say. When it comes to religion, it's not only going to worship and so on and so forth. 
economic benefit is very, very important. The econ economic of the whole world hinges on the effort of the Christian tradition. It's, it's a Christian, Christian tradition, tradition that made Britain what it used to be. The, the Americans, Americans, Europe, and so on and so forth. The economy of God was said that man should be his brother's or her brother's keeper. So within the ecumenical system, and to another extent, within the Episcopal system, we speak certain language, both economic, religious, moral, and political. You remember when we did the uh, proclamation service, proclamation at, service Wesley. at Wesley? I don't know, I don't where, know where you were. You were. But I didn't come, but I was around. You were around? You were around. Yes. <laughs> Do you know the you one know who the preached? One who preached? Yes. Reverend uh, Texan. That's the point. <laughs> we are moving, are moving towards it. Okay. At times, At times we, meet. we meet within the, the Christian, Christian Council. Council. And then the then Catholics. The Catholics. And then we then do, we our, do common our common thing. thing. Yeah. So we are so getting. We are getting Closer to it, and it, and it, it needs, needs a lot, a lot of teaching. Teach. Yeah. 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 On, on both sides, sides. Both sides. from the Catholics, the Catholics, and then from and those who are the non-Catholics. Non yeah. Yes. And I think those coming in our Methodist side, we really need to teach them. That is the point. This is what we expect from our bishops, and then our superintendent ministers and our circuit minister. A lot of teaching. Yeah. Good. For my last question. Oh, really? Yes, okay. I don't want to take much of your time. Yeah, I appreciate that. <laughs> Baba, I want to know, uh, the people called Methodists. Yeah. Today's Wesleyan. Yeah. What will you tell them about Episcopacy? Right. From whatever you said yep. till now, what do you want the uh, today's Wesleyan know about Episcopacy? What I want them to know for today's Wesleyan is Episcopacy brings the churches together under one body. Because there are certain common things we have to do to show that we are all Christians. That's the central point. It doesn't bring division. Rather, it brings us closer to the world wide body. Papa, and then I say a big thank you for granting us this interview this morning. It's a pleasure. We are so grateful. It's a pleasure. We shall hear about this. Give my regards to him. Yeah, you as uh, we greet you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are fortunate once again to have the first lay president of the Methodist Church Ghana. She's in the person of Mrs. Naomi Okan. Mama, good afternoon. Good afternoon, ma'am. You're welcome. Thank you. Oh. Yeah, we are from Northern Accra Diocese. Mm -hmm. So we bring you greetings from our bishop. Thank you. Uh -huh. Right, Reverend Professor Edisa 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 Edisa. Mm -hmm. We attend his greetings. Thank you. Ma, you know this year marks 20 years since we went Episcopal. Episcopal. Yeah. 20 years, a lot of things have gone down. Mm -hmm. We know a lot of people have joined the, the church. Mm -hmm. Those who were born 20 years down don't even know what Episcopacy is or Episcopal is. Mm -hmm. So today, we came here to give, so that you give us a little about what you know about Episcopal and why Methodist Church Ghana went Episcopal. Oh, thank you very much.
But to me as a lay person, my understanding was Episcopacy means leadership by the bishops. Methodist Church, not only in Ghana, but Methodist Church in general, believes in the priesthood of all believers, where the ministry is shared between the clergy and the lay. But looking at what is going on throughout the Methodist family, every the United Methodists, for example, have bishops. Then you go to other countries where we all belong to the Methodist, World Methodist Council. Quite a number of them have become have bishops. They've become episcopal. And to be in in that category, we have also to start thinking in that way. The discussion had taken a long time because I remember as far back as 1992, even beyond that, when they were doing a church union, the issue was floated around. But then in 1992, during President Dixon's time, it started with Reverend Dr. Stevens. Then during Dr. Professor Dixon's time also, committees were formed to start looking at papers, their processes and all. I happened to serve on those committees. Then the accommodation came when Dr. Santinti became the president of conference, 1997-1998. And then, after discussing it for a long time, and then we looked at the term, and then the number of conferences that we go, how do we handle all those things, you know, because a lot of work had to be involved in setting out a pattern of Christmas. We didn't have to follow somebody's pattern. Because we, have, uh, we were used to having a chairman and a president for a period they work under a term. So how do we factor this term, this stadium into the new system that we are trying to adopt? First, the proposal was for a five-year term, and they said, why don't we have a six-year term? Because we used to have five plus two. Five years for the first instance, and then when you receive 75% of votes from conference members, then you can add another two to be six, seven to seven exactly. years. So now we said, well, why don't we adopt a one for, once for all term of six years? Those were part of the processes that we have to, those thinking, those thoughts. And so we decided on constitutional apostrophe, where we will still work within the Methodist constitution. We are not going to borrow from somewhere, but to maintain the Methodist constitution because of the deed of foundation. Deed of foundation sets out our rules and beliefs and our doctrine on all those things. So it was agreed in 1999, 1999 conference at Kofroidwa, and it was adopted overwhelmingly. So in January, 23rd January, 19, uh, 2000, 2000. 2000 January, 23rd, the proclamation service was held at Wesley, Accra. And then, Names changed. They prescribed uniforms, the titles that will go with each office. The president of conference became the presiding bishop, presiding over Methodist Church. And the vice president of conference, who is a lay person, became the lay president of the conference. And then the conference secretary, secretary of the conference, became a bishop. 
of the conference. All the chairman of districts, chairman and general superintendents of the districts became the bishops. And then instead of district now, we have the diocese. And then the first chapels, the main chapel in the main diocese became a cathedral. So what are some of the benefits that we Well, at the second level now, we have a lay child person. For, for, yes, it runs through. And we're trying to create one that must be the understanding for the society's level, society level. But then we want to avoid confusion as well. Uh -huh, because in the report that I've been reading, some of the at the society level, I wanted to have fraud seats, special seats for themselves, you know, and it creates some misgivings. You know, it looks as if there is no harmony between the lay and the clergy, you know. And what we want is to build harmony, you know, where we support each other. Yeah, because yeah, because when you look at the numerical strength of the clergy. And the total Christian community of the church, we don't have enough ministers to go around. So they will depend on the support of the lay. And this is why we have the class leaders, the local preachers, the evangelists, and all those people, all those things, you know, just to give support. And me as a lay president, lay president then, I was working to assist the presiding bishop, because that is what the standing order says, to assist. And then to do things that he will refer to you. You don't have an agenda. You can't have a program. The church's program that is carried through is what you have to go follow up and give me the needed support. Where he can't travel, or where he can't go, so where you will have to go. He assigned me to go to those places, you know, because I can never be assistant to the bishop. <laughs> there was no way, I'm not an ordain in this no. time. So there was no way of, you know, even aspiring to do his work, you know, except he asks you to do. You know, you build collaboration that will push the church forward, not to drag the church. And there should be any confusion because he is my spiritual head. And he's a spokesperson for the church. He's the only one who speaks with the government on behalf of the church. Anyways, yeah. I think we have had enough with Mrs. Naomi Okai. She has told us a little that we need to know. It is very important that we go a piece over. We have done that. It is important to change the uniforms. We have done that. The benefits today, the lay. We have lay from the commercial level to the diocesan level. And that's one too. It's a benefit to us. And to the circuits. To the circuits as well. As well. Yes. It is very good for us to strengthen the good work that they, they came to do. And then we move forward the Methodist church. Thank you.
At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, every him King of glory now. Tis the Father's pleasure that we should call him Lord, who from the beginning was the mighty word. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. The pleasure and privilege are mine to extend a very hearty welcome to your excellencies and lordships for making time, in spite of your very busy shadows, to grace this historic occasion in the annals of the Methodist Church, Ghana. As you all know, we have gathered on this historic day, Sunday, January 23rd, the year of our Lord 2000, to solemnly make an official announcement to the Universal Church, the nation of Ghana and the entire world, that the Methodist Church Ghana has adopted a biblical pattern of episcopacy. Dr. Samuel Shanti and we, wherefore that we may know that you indeed still profess the Christian faith and desire by God's grace to continue to fulfill this ministry, we require you to answer these questions. Do you still trust that God, that you are called to the office of presiding bishop in the Church of God? I do. Do you still accept the Holy Scriptures as containing all things necessary for salvation and as a supreme and decisive standard of faith? I do. Do you still accept the apostles and Nicene priests as witnessing to and safeguarding the faith which is set forth in Scripture? I do. I know. 
Whereas every individual believer has a particular party ministry to carry out the church, and whereas the ordained ministry, however, exists to ensure church order, facilitate the preaching and teaching of the word, administer the sacraments, and to provide leadership in the church and the wider community, and whereas the church realizes. The need, the need to conform, to, conform to, to a biblical pattern of, of episcopacy. episcopacy. And whereas the purpose of effecting the changes stated in this proclamation, the constitution and standing orders will be amended, amended accordingly. accordingly. And whereas the 38th annual, annual conference unanimously, unanimously adopted the proposals to conform to, conform to a biblical pattern of episcopacy. At home, it is ministerial, ministerial and represented sessions following, following a period of diligent discussions of the matter over the years. Now, now therefore, this proclamation witnesses that the conference of the Methodist Church Ghana at its 38th annual conference held in Koforidwa from the 18th to the 25th August 1999. In, in a spirit of, of humility, humility to proclaim one, one the presiding bishop of the Methodist Church Ghana, that the presiding president of conference, the chief servant, pastor, overseer, and teacher of the church, by the power of the Holy Spirit, shall be known as the presiding bishop of the Methodist Church Ghana and referred to as the most reverend. That upon ceasing to hold that office, a presiding bishop will assume the title past presiding bishop and retain the designation the most reverend. Two, the late president. That the vice president of conference shall be known as the late president of the Methodist Church Ghana. That upon ceasing to hold office, a lay president will assume the title past lay president. Three, the administrative bishop. That the secretary of conference shall be known as the administrative bishop of the Methodist Church Ghana with a responsibility for the administrative affairs of the church and shall be referred to as the right reverend. That upon ceasing to hold office, as administrative bishop, shall have the title past administrative bishop and shall retain the designation the right reverend. Dowsies and Dowsism bishops, that the administrative division of the church known as districts shall be known as Dowsies, that the chairman and general superintendents of existing districts shall be known as diocesan bishops and referred to as the right reverend. That upon ceasing to hold office, a diocesan bishop shall have the title of past bishop and shall continue to be referred to as the right reverend. Other church officials. That all past presidents of conference shall be referred to as the most reverend, that all past vice presidents of conference shall be known as past vice presidents of conference, that all past secretaries of conference shall be referred to as the right reverend, that all past chairmen and general superintendents of districts shall be referred to as the right reverend, that the existing office of assistant secretary of conference shall be known as the assistant to the administrative bishop. That the following categories of ordained ministers shall be referred to as the very reverend. One, the assistant to the administrative bishop. Two, the diocesan synod secretaries. Three, the superintendent ministers. Four, all Methodist ministers in Methodist assisted Methodist-related tertiary institutions, 
who are either heads or deputies or are of the rank of senior lecturer and above. Five, all general directors. Six, all Methodist chaplain generals. And seven, the general secretary of the Christian Council of Ghana if an ordained minister of the Methodist State Ghana. That all ordained ministers shall be known as elders and shall be referred to as a reverend. That all probationers shall be known as deacons and shall be referred to as the reverend. Signed for and on behalf of the Methodist State Ghana at the proclamation service held in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit on this 23rd day of January 2000 in the year of our Lord at the Wesley Methodist Church at Safwache Nete Road, Accra. I will now proceed to invite the presiding bishop, lay president, the past presidents, to sign the proclamation. Thank you. Presiding Bishop, I present to you the following. The Right Reverend Albert Ufue Wright, Connectional Administration, the Wesley House of Accra. The Right Reverend Justice K.A. Dodson, Cape Coast Diocese. The Right Reverend Samuel K. Hudasi, Accra Diocese. The Right Reverend Kweku Asamuachiri, Kumasi Diocese. The Right Reverend Cole B. Ejiri, Second D. Diocese. The Right Reverend William John Fair, Winneba Diocese. The Right Reverend Joseph K. Atu Brown, Koforidwa Diocese. The Right Reverend K. Omani Ashanfo, Sunyani Diocese. The Right Reverend Samson Yamwa, Takwa Diocese. The Right Reverend Joseph K. Techi Ansa, Northern Ghana Diocese. The Right Reverend Benjamin A. Asari, Achimoda Diocese. The Right Reverend Moses O. Entry, Ephedrasi Diocese. The Right Reverend Samuel N. J. Mensa, Obuasi Diocese. The Right Reverend Dr. Seth A. I. E. Teman Diocese. Dear Lord, these are who, in the name of God, we formally proclaim as Bishop of the United States, Ghana. Most of you here, President Salamber, that each of these servants of the Lord was granted to government in the office and work of either a secretary of conference or a general general to be led. They each perform the three four functions of self pastor, teacher, and overseer. They are respected the sacramental and other ability tasks they perform for the church and their communities. And so special duties the Bible for bishops, in actuality, each of them is 
is a bona fide mission. And so, we are pleased to give you our present designation a biblical school. We therefore ask you, dear Lady Lord, to pray for them for the pleasure to this time. In your reflection, meditation, silent prayer, contemplation, let us pray for these servants of oh God. We are Exhort with all long suffering and teaching. Be thou sober in all things. Suffer hardship. Do the work of an evangelist. Fulfill thy ministry. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Our gospel proclamation from John chapter 21 verses 15 to 17. Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, lovest thou me more than these? He said unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He said unto him, Feed my lambs. He said to him again a second time, Simon, son of John, lovest thou me? He said unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He said unto him, Tend my sheep. He said unto him the third time, Simon, son of John, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved because he said unto him the third time, Lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love thee. Jesus saith unto him, Feed my sheep.
We believe that it is God who gives you grace and authority for your office and work to which you are called. And that God does so in answer to the prayers of the church and through the actions and words of God's appointed ministers. We are and speak as part of the universal church and in the faith which we have now with united voice declared the word of the people. Wherefore, that we may know that we need to confess the faith and desire our own ways to continue to fulfill the spirit prayer. We require you to answer these questions. Do you still trust that you are called to the office of bishop in the church of God? I do. Do you still accept the Holy Spirit as containing all things necessary for salvation and the supreme society that of faith? Do you still accept the apostles and the Nazi priests as witnessing to the Savior of the faith which is set forth in Scripture? Will you, for Christ's sake, continue to empower and defend you, kind and merciful to the poor and needy, the weak? And the vulnerable? I will. Glory be to God. May I ask all ministers, present all ministers, to leave this conference and connection to please stand up. Because you are part of this ceremony, you are answering on behalf of the connection. You are answering on behalf of of the church. Will you continue to see that the preaching and teaching of the gospel are coming out? And that baptism, confirmation, and deliverance are easy and regular activities? And will you be faithful and free? In recruiting candidates for the ministry, seeing you believe, you are called to continue to exercise this ministry within the church. Do you promise to continue to fulfill the duties of the office in accordance with the constitution and standing of this office to the Question. You are more than the bishops, and we expect you to help them. Brethren and fellow members of the priesthood of all believers, for as much as it pleases God for the church to adopt a biblical pattern of episcopacy in Ghana Methodism, do you promise to endeavor in your power to continue as faithful servants of God? I think we would like to stand at this point because I cannot ask my Lord Bishops to, to kneel down here. I'll be in trouble. So we keep standing and continue with this prayer. Almighty God, who has given you the will to do all these things, continue to grant you also grace to perform them. 
faithful is he that calleth you? Who also will do it? Amen. Amen. The congregation, please sit as we continue in prayer. Here we are praying silently for the whole church. For the whole church. This Connection Bible on a token of the authority which you received to be a minister in the Church of God. Give heed unto reading, exhortation, teaching. Think upon the things contained in this book. Give yourself wholly to them. That the increase coming thereby may be manifest in all people. For by so doing, you save both yourself and those who hear you. Amen. Amen. <laughs> With your fellow bishops, you will share in the leadership of the church through the world. Your heritage is the faith of the patriarchs, prophets, apostles and martyrs, and those of every generation who have looked to God in hope. Accordingly, let this pastoral staff always remind you that you have been called to serve the flock of Christ as a shepherd. Feed the flock. Hold up the weak. Heal the sick. Bind up the broken. Bring again the outcast. Seek the lost. So be merciful that you be not remiss. So minister discipline that you forget not mercy. That when the chief shepherd shall appear, you may receive the never fading crown of glory. Amen.
declare that all the ministers standing before us, whose names were called a few moments ago, are bishops in the Church of God. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thanks be to God. And indeed, in the name of the whole Catholic Church in Ghana, and on their behalf, we congratulate you heartily today, this morning, on your adoption of this biblical pattern of leadership, and as our, lay, our mothers just sang in the uh, in, in Fante, Yebeshe Bishop. Huh? So Yebeshe Bishop, uh, then in a way, it's like an ordination. So we like to heartily congratulate you on your adoption of these titles and so the elevation to this status. We sincerely glad on this adoption for very many reasons. Not because it's something that we had before, but it probably invites us all to go more to the roots where it all began, to scriptures and to Bible. That's why we like to thank you, and that's why we congratulate you heartily on our celebration this morning. Just yes, Amen, Speaker of Parliament, the Right Honourable Mrs. Mary Brandt, Member of Council of State, Honourable Ministers and Members of Parliament. Your Excellency, Mr. Aka, former Vice President of Ghana. The Honorable Mr. J. Okufo, Presidential Candidate of the New Patriotic Party. Your Eminence. Your Eminence, the Prelate of the Methodist Church of Nigeria. My Lord Archbishops and Bishops, old and new, Reverend Ministers and other clergy, distinguished invited guests, my brothers and sisters in Christ. It is indeed a great honor for me to have been invited to share fellowship with such eminent persons of God and on such an auspicious occasion. I thank God and you for this honor. I bring you very warm felicitations from His Excellency the President and indeed from the whole government. We are justifiably proud and congratulate you profusely on this bold and momentous step you are taking today. My Lords and Reverend Ministers, the step you are taking today is ample proof that the Methodist Church of Ghana is not imperious to change. Much too, much too often, success becomes a barrier to adaptation and further success. The Methodist Church has not allowed its growth and success to prevent it from modernizing and further impacting our generation for God. This progressive attitude of the Church is for the good of the nation just as it is for its members. The party chairman of the new patriotic party to bring us a short message. The chairman of the new patriotic party. His Excellency, Professor Atamils, Vice President of the Republic of Ghana. His Excellency, Honorable uh, DFNN, Speaker of uh, Parliament, His Excellency King Akar, 
former uh, Vice President of the Republic of Ghana, Honorable J. Kufuo, Presidential Candidate of the New Patriotic Party, the contribution of the Methodist Church to him and to his children and the fact that he himself is a member of the Methodist Church. <laughs> of course, I do not want to forget Professor Edubwahin, the great historian who benefited from the educational, the educational vision of the Methodist Church an old student of the, of the school. That's what they call it in fancy. <laughs> the Methodist Church again, why did we stop? When we started the basic education, move on to secondary education to establish some of the best you can think of in this country. I can mention the great infancy in Wesley Girls High, you can talk about the Wesley College, you can talk about Commander Training College, and many more. And of course, some other basic the Lord, O ye mighty, give unto the Lord glory and strength. Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of his holiness. Gracious God, we thank you for touching our hearts and our minds to give generously today towards the work of the Methodist University. We pray that you may continue to touch many hearts, that this will not be the end of our giving, that we will give towards the good cause. And we pray for those who have given and those who have not, that you bless all of us together. May your face indeed shine upon us as we continue to work to the honor and glory of your name. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him that bringeth good tidings, that publisheth peace, that bringeth good tidings of good, that publisheth salvation, that saith unto Zion, thy God reigneth. Your Excellency, the Vice President of the Republic of Ghana, the Right Honorable Speaker of Parliament, the Right Honorable Dr. Mary, Mrs. Mary Grant, Member of Council of State, MPs, Honorable MPs, the clergy, my Christian friends, we thank God that today has become part of the history of the Methodist Church Ghana. Your Excellency's message of goodwill comes to us at a time when we are venturing into another area in our mission as a church. You spoke about change that has taken place today. It was not easy. Now, for a church that has been in existence for 165 years, I can tell you that it takes us about three years to put a dot to our constitution. And for us to have discussed this issue for a number of years, and today is our community. <laughs> Thank you. 
Thank you.